Okay, so a ton of stuff has happened for Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl in the last week or so. Tons of gameplay info and footage, we got new characters officially revealed, plus lots of speculation about leaks, including a couple brand new leaks that might potentially be revealing the full base game roster. And, most importantly, confirmation this game will be getting DLC. That's right, DLC is confirmed. Post-game content is happening for Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl. And I could not be more excited to see where this game is headed in the future. And of course, I will go over all the stuff in this video. First off, the most recent thing I just want to show right here at the start, over on Reddit, apparently a new box art, or rather main game screen image, has appeared showing unrevealed characters, such as Aang, Korra, and Toph, as well as characters we hadn't seen this style artwork for yet, like Zim and Helga. This is popping up for some people who pre-ordered the game on the Xbox Series X. I've seen videos of this, and it's happened for multiple people, so it seems to be definitely legitimate. And it fits really well with another leak I'll talk about later on in this video that showed up earlier this week. So this is probably the game's main screen, and potentially also the final box art for the game as well. Looks awesome, and I'm glad to see Toph is here. There are some oddities with this image, like Nigel Thornberry being the only character that isn't part of this artwork for some reason, and Gurr being separate from Zim, even though we know Gurr is not his own fighter and just a part of Zim's moveset. They did the same thing with Gurr during the initial reveal trailer for the game, so I don't know what's up with that. So with this new game screen showing up last night, I'm going to try and recap everything relevant to Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl speculation in a somewhat chronological timeline of events that's happened over the last week or so. I think that's going to be the best way to do this video. I think some things will get kind of confusing if I don't go over it all in the order that stuff happened in. So while I might jump around a little bit outside of the timeline for when we learned of some of these things, I'm going to try and mostly go through everything that happened one by one and explain it in the order we learned about it. A lot of really interesting stuff has gone down over the last week, and a lot of the speculation aspects will only make sense if I explain what was happening at the time before we then learned more information a bit later. So first off, a bunch of gameplay and character showcase videos have been dropping online. This started on IGN, and there's now a bunch of them on the Game Mill Entertainment YouTube channel as well. I strongly suggest subscribing to that channel and checking out the gameplay videos, and especially the character showcase videos, which go in-depth with each character's movesets and how they'll play in this game. Also, the official Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl Twitter has been posting character moveset images. Looks like something straight out of an old-school strategy guide or video game manual, and I love it. Big fan of old-school gaming guides and stuff like that. So I'd also suggest following that Twitter page and keeping up with those moveset rundown images. They have posted quite a few brawlers with these images, but there's plenty more we're still waiting to see. Also, looking at these showcase videos and the moveset images, you can see just how much care has been put into each and every character in this game. There are tons of references from all of their series, and the team has clearly gone out of their way to capture the personalities of each character and reference memorable moments from each of their series with these movesets. I could make a whole video breaking down where each move originated from, which like episode and moments from the shows, but that would take a really long time. So instead, I suggest you go check out this stuff for yourself and see what references are familiar to you. There's a lot of cool ones. Also, in the gameplay and character showcase videos, we got all sorts of cool stuff shown off. Stages, character taunts, win and loss animations, and all kinds of other stuff. Again, I could make multiple entire videos analyzing these gameplay and character showcase videos and what cool references they contain. Check out Winslow in the background of the cat dog stage, or Mr. Horse in the background of the Ren and Stimpy stage. We also have gotten confirmation within these videos that characters do in fact have home stages. So that whole stage theory thing is likely 100% confirmed now. Each fighter will have their own home stage from their series. Anyway, rather than go over every detail from these videos, again, I think the better option is for you guys to just check them out for yourselves. They have been putting up new videos and showcasing characters almost every day, so go enjoy watching those videos and get excited for this game. I am.
Also, Rep on the Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl Discord has been talking a lot about the gameplay mechanics of this game. If the gameplay and character showcase videos weren't enough, there's tons of information that's been posted over on the Discord. Now, I'm not going to go over everything that's been said there myself. I haven't played the game, and I'd hate to try and interpret and explain my take on what Rep has been saying here and end up wrong about something specific. But everything from reflecting projectiles to the button layouts and grabbing opponents off ledge has been discussed. There's a lot of gameplay that's getting talked about. And while the gameplay is Smash-like, it seems it will still be a very unique and also well thought out gameplay experience that's totally new and fresh. For fans of competitive platform fighters looking for a breath of fresh air, I think this is all rather exciting. Also on the Discord, Rep has mentioned some things about the game not directly pertaining to gameplay, such as rollback netcode being on all platforms. Though apparently three to four player rollback seems to only be on the beefier platforms. I assume that means the Switch will only have rollback in a 1v1 scenario, but rollback is really for like tournament level play, which generally is the 1v1 stuff, so likely that's fine with everybody except for the hardcore fans of like doubles tournaments. We were told some information about the single player mode. Basically, it won't be fighting CPU opponents, but rather arcade style trials and stuff like that. Don't worry though, CPU opponents still exist as we have seen that in the game already, but likely it's just not part of the one player mode, or rather it's something probably selectable in like verses for practicing against the computer and stuff. This is totally fine with me, honestly facing off against several matches of CPU opponents in a lone single player mode isn't usually very fun in my opinion. Timed events like break the targets or board the platforms from Super Smash Bros. are way more fun one player content. That's just how I feel about it anyway. Who knows what All-Star Brawl will have, but I imagine they cooked up some really fun single-player events for the single-player modes. One thing people have noticed, especially with all the new footage of the game in action, is the somewhat generic and lackluster music tracks and sound effects here. We knew no voice acting would be in the game, but the sound of the game all around does leave a lot to be improved upon. Apparently they were forced to revise a lot of the music, that's what we've been told. I'm unsure why exactly, but maybe they can't even do tracks that resemble the tracks from the show without potential copyright infringement. Who knows for sure what's going on with that, but apparently they were forced to revise a lot of the music. Anyway, luckily with the attention this game is getting and the fact it will get post-launch support, and I'll talk more about that later, Rep had this to say. Still bummed the stage's music was a victim of revision purgatory. Max is absolutely correct in saying that music is as much an element of fighting games as the gameplay. Like animations, the music will be something the team looks into after release. Same with sound effects. Heck, some might even make the day one patch. So hopefully that means a lot of this game's shortcomings will now have a chance to be patched up and fixed as time goes on in the post-launch of the game. Actually, I just want to take a moment and say with DLC and post-launch support confirmed, it's pretty incredible that the huge amount of support and hype this game has gotten is likely going to help turn it into something truly great in the end. I think at this game's origin and conceptual level, on the Nickelodeon side of things anyway, it was likely destined to just be another drop-in-the-bucket Nick game that are kind of a dime a dozen out there. However, with the competent developers behind it who really seem to care about making this game as good as possible, and with the fan base exploding and supporting this endeavor, these things combined has managed to wake up the higher ups at Nickelodeon and gotten them the green light for this game to keep going after launch with DLC and stuff. Confirmation of DLC means more time and more of a budget for this game. I of course don't know the specifics for how all of this went down and DLC got the green light, but the fact it went from an uncertain about whether or not it would get DLC to confirmation it will now be supported post-launch, I'm sure the hard work from the devs and the support from the fans are the reason it got here. And that's awesome to think about. We'll see where this game is like a year from now. I'm very excited. Also worth noting, there has been talk about modding the game, so no matter where the game ends up officially, it's possible with this kind of fan support, some very strong mods could come out of this game. Basically, no matter what the state of the game is at the launch, and supposedly at least balance-wise, it might be a rather messy game at launch, I think with some time and this kind of fan support and support from the developers, either through the DLC or through fan mods, eventually we will likely have of the Nickelodeon platform fighter everyone is dreaming about in our hands, one way or another. 
Okay, so let's start going through things chronologically. Last week we got a new character reveal, Ren and Stimpy. We pretty much knew these characters were in the game due to the box art leak, but still great to actually see them in action. Oddly enough, like the day before this reveal, I was at Kineticon and I saw Billy West, the voice of Ren and Stimpy. So that was a bit of a weird coincidence to get them revealed right after seeing their voice actor. Anyway, Ren and Stimpy look great. They are a duo fighter, so only taking one spot on the roster and have a sort of Banjo-Kazooie thing going on, where Ren basically rides on Stimpy's back and they use each other as weapons. Their moveset has a ton of references to Ren and Stimpy, and you can really tell this character oozes with love and care from the devs. They have a move where they throw Log, and we are told this move is called Log from Blamo. We had the ESRB description of the game cite a move called Log Toss, so I'm unsure if the ESRB Log Toss move was an early name for this one, or just a description of this move, but this is probably the Log Toss move the ESRB description was mentioning. Similarly, the ESRB description mentioned a move called Pizza Throw, yet the move where Michelangelo throws a pizza is called Wanna Pizza This. Again, likely the ESRB just had early descriptive versions of these moves and not their final names, so I am thinking the Log Toss is in fact the Log from Blamo attack. Ren and Stimpy's taunt even seems to reference Adult Party Cartoon, which is a bit surprising. I didn't think they'd do that, but hey, there you go. It looks like it is referencing it. Ren and Stimpy's stage is Space Madness, which was what I wanted, and I said I wanted that to be their stage. I'm actually kind of shocked I was right about that, as the show had like a million locations to choose from. Ren and Stimpy kind of just jump all over the place. There's not really a consistent locale with no clear front runner what the stage would be, so guessing it, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty shocked I did. The stage the stage is made up of a bunch of floating objects to use as platforms, so it's an unconventional stage layout for sure, reminds me a bit of Pokey Floats. And finally, Ren and Stimpy's win animation is, of course, what else? The Happy Happy Joy Joy Dance. I can't think of anything that would have been better, so happy to see their win animation is in fact Happy Happy Joy Joy. Alright, so with Ren and Stimpy confirmed, and we now have a look at what they actually look like in this game, people began checking the Garfield leak again to see if the Ren and Stimpy models lined up up with it. And yeah, they do seem like they line up extremely well. There's some slight differences here for sure. Ren's eyelids are clearly a different color now, but considering how models can change a bit in development, I'm not too surprised to see a different colored eyelid on Ren. There's things like getting the shape of Ren's hair correct or the very similar look on Ren's face in both the leak and this image that line up really well. I have to say I'm personally convinced there's no way someone could fake the characters lining up this well. This goes beyond the characters being simply on model with their own shows and how they're looking in this game. Uh, you simply would not give Ren that face or get the hairs that perfect by just pure chance and coincidence. Now, I have seen some people claiming there's a bunch of artifacting around Garfield, and that maybe the lineup was real, so the Ren and Sippy models are real, but Garfield being on here was fake. That's possible, I suppose. I've also seen strong rebuttals against the idea of Garfield having artifacting. Or even if he does have artifacting, perhaps someone simply had a large image of Garfield, and they shrunk him down and placed him alongside the rest of the characters just to make a clear lineup of all the characters. Whatever the case may be, I think Ren and Stimpy at least confirms to some extent the Garfield leak is legitimate. Whether Garfield was faked into that leak onto like the actual character fighter lineup, I don't know for sure, but Occam's Razor makes me think this one is likely just a real leak, and Garfield likely is going to be in the game. Now, after Ren and Stimpy got revealed, and while everyone was debating the Garfield leak's legitimacy, and weighing it up against the Ren and Stimpy models we just got revealed, that same day, a brand new leak showed up on the official Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl Discord. So this new leak was posted by Kel. N not, not Kel, as in Keenan and Kel, but Kel. Kel! <laughs> Come over here and meet your biggest fan. Hey! What's up? Oh, Kim Bell. It is a distinct pleasure to meet you, sir. I have been a fan of your fine paintings for over 20 years. <laughs> what? Carl Kimbell? No, no, no. My name's Kel Kimball. Kimball? You're not the artist Carl Kimbell of Sweden? No. I'm the teenager, Kel Kimball of Chicago. <laughs> well, there's a huge mistake. Huh? No, 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 no. No mistake. Um, 
Yeah, Kellis from Sweden? Yeah, 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 we both are. Um, isn't that the right? Okay, uh, yeah, yeah. We are from Sweden. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, uh, Sweden is where we are from. Yeah, I'm just like, oh, give me a Give This is not sweet talk. Anyway, here's what Kale leaked. We have three images. The first is this character lineup with two characters scribbled out. Aang and Korra are here, so that lines up with the box art leak. And they have seemingly brand new renders. I haven't found anyone who can source the images of the characters in these poses anyway. And we also have Toph. We know we have two Avatar stages and one Legend of Korra stage. So Toph makes sense as a second Avatar rep going by the whole home stage theory thing. Toph was my guess at who I thought another Avatar rep might be anyway to fit the Omashu stage. We also got a character select screen image which has all of these characters, minus the two scribbled out fighters, leaving us with a 20 character roster. The final image is of a stage select screen. Again, we have 20 stages here. So one stage for every fighter on that 20 character roster, fitting with the home stage theory. Again, each fighter seems to have their own stage. Now we were told the game would have no unlockable characters. So a little odd that we have a possible leaked character select screen and stage select screen, but with only 20 fighters. We've been shown 22 fighters in the yet to be revealed image. And even that one image in this Kale leak, or I've heard some people calling it the Toph leak, had two more fighters scribbled out. So we'll get back to this point in a bit. For now, what's important is that suddenly in the midst of a new fighter reveal, Ren and Stimpy, and heated debates about the Garfield leak's legitimacy, we had yet another brand new potential leak to discuss, the Kale leak or the Toph leak, I've heard it called both. And so the people moderating the Nick All-Star Brawl Discord and the Reddit were bombarded with lots of people wanting to know what's up with these leaks. After all, extremely convincing leaks force rebuttal, right? Well, what ended up happening is the banning of leak discussion and the Nick All-Star Brawl Discord going into a temporary read-only state lockdown. Basically, the reaction to this new leak and all this leak discussion was to nuke the whole Discord and ban talking about leaks. If nothing else, the reaction to all of this made this new leak seem very convincing, more so than what the leak looked like at first at face value. So let's take a look back at that character lineup image. I actually saw this one floating around as well, which has Garfield as the final character in the lineup. If the Garfield leak is right, this would have been my guess anyway and makes sense. I'm not sure exactly where this version of the image that has Garfield on it came from. I don't think it's the one that Cal actually first posted in that Discord, but I have seen it floating around, so here it is. Either way, Garfield would have been my guess at the final character here because of the Garfield leak. Now the other scribbled out character is interesting because we can actually see part of them. They appear to have a really wide stance and their shoes are poking out a bit from the scribbled out part. Also their name seems to be relatively short. Given their placement in this lineup, they are between the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle fighters and before Reptar, our lone Rugrats fighter. This means either they are a TMNT character, or a Rugrats character, or they are from their own series. It's also worth noting that Spongebob, Avatar, and TMNT have the most fighters here, and they start off this whole lineup. After those three series with the most fighters, we seem to start the series with only one or two fighters each. Reptar is from Rugrats, and Ren and Stimpy follow right after that. Rugrats and Ren and Stimpy are the very first original Nicktoons that aired on the exact same day. Now there's one other Nicktoon that aired right alongside with them, Nickelodeon's Doug. So if this mystery character does begin the part of this lineup that has the series with only one or two reps and precedes Rugrats and Ren and Stimpy, then my guess would be it would have to be Doug. However, Doug is owned by Disney these days. And while I think Nickelodeon has the rights to the original episodes, like the original run of Doug, actually using the character in something new might be off the table for them. I think Disney owns the rights to the character. I'd be extremely surprised if Doug made it into this game. He's probably the toughest Nicktoon character, negotiations-wise, that they could actually try for. Also, the shoes that we can see a little bit of, and the extremely wide stance of the character, doesn't seem like it would be a good fit for Doug, in my opinion. So if it's not someone from a new series, it would either have to be a Rugrats character, or a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles character. I can't think of any Rugrat characters that fit very well here, but I can think of a certain TMNT character that could fit really well. Shredder. 
Now, I'll be the first one to say I find it incredibly strange we could get four TMNT characters and not get all four turtles playable. Obviously, April and Shredder would be more unique, at least appearance-wise, than simply getting the four turtles. But as a Raphael fan, it would be rather strange to have had him cut in favor of some lesser characters in the show. Seems to me the whole point in not having all four turtles playable would be to cut down the amount of TMNT characters on the roster and allow the roster some room to breathe to add fighters from unrepresented series, not just pick different TMNT characters than the four main turtles. But if this leak is legit, I honestly can't think of a better fit for which character this could be over Shredder. And don't get me wrong, Shredder is really cool, he's a very cool choice, I potentially even have him as one of my mains, but I still find cutting Raph and Don in favor of Shredder and April a bit of a bummer, especially as a Raphael fan myself, but oh well. Shredder fits the placement next to the other TMNT characters, and I could see him having a really wide stance, he'd be like ready to fight, and his name is short enough to be scribbled out here. What doesn't fit is that the shoes we can see look kind of like thonged sandals, which fit well for Shredder, but not for his 80s look, which of course all the TMNT stuff in this game are based on. Of course, Shredder has worn that style footwear, sandals like that, in other incarnations of Shredder. Previously, when talking about the box art silhouette leak, I doubted the silhouette was for April, based on the outline of the shoe, which I didn't think seemed to fit the 80s boots that April has very well. So fool me once. I'm gonna go ahead and say this could just be an updated 80s Shredder look where his shoes aren't just black, they're actually sandals here. And my guess is this is probably Shredder. Whatever character scribbled out here, my best guess is Shredder. All right, now looking at the stage select screen, there's some interesting stuff here. And like I said before, I'm going over everything somewhat chronologically, so I will return to this stage select screen in a bit and talk about more that happened when we learned some more stuff. But when this leak first appeared, there were some things of note here to begin with. Again, 20 spots, not 22, and it does fit for every character in the 20 character roster that was also part of this Toph leak. We get a much better look at some of the stages we hadn't seen much of at all at this point, like the Wild Thornberry stage. We'd basically only seen this one shot of it. And all of these stages are fully zoomed out, which we hadn't seen for many of them either. But most interestingly was the stage we hadn't seen at all, the Rugrats stage for Reptar. This appears to be Teeter Totter Gulch from the episode Showdown at Teeter Totter Gulch. It's an episode where Tommy and Chucky go to a playground and the whole thing is kind of a imaginary Wild West theme. Looking at the stage here, it might literally be a giant teeter-totter, which could be a really unique stage mechanic, shifting up and down on either side, mattering to where the fighters are. If this leak was fake, that's a lot of thought to put into a tiny blurry stage image. The other thing about Teeter Totter Gulch that stands out to me is that it's an episode from Rugrats that has a Rugrats meme associated with it. The one where Tommy says he's going to go home to go nap nap. If there's one thing Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl has been heavy on, it's the meme references. And the stage would follow that pattern. Alright, so this Kel leak or Toff leak was looking very good. New avatar character renders, plus new stages or angles of the stages we hadn't seen much of. But it did have the oddity of having an only 20 character roster, though Kel had claimed it was incomplete. Well, after people started digging into this one and the Discord got nuked over the whole leak discussion, banning and everything, Kale started denying the legitimacy of the leak and claimed they had faked it, or at least faked part of it, Kale said. I know leak speak is banned, but I've got to be real with you guys. The reason Toff is so scuffed here is because I thought Ren and Stimpy were going to be separate characters and I rushed to airbrush her model. So, now according to Kel, the person who leaked these images, they claim they airbrushed in Toff in order to add another character, as they apparently had assumed Ren and Stimpy would be separate fighters, and they quickly needed another fighter to fill in a missing spot. In a roster that they're saying they faked of only 20 fighters, when everyone assumed it would be 22, and of course not having another Avatar fighter if they didn't initially intend on having Toph would have gone against the whole home stage theory as we knew we had three Avatar series stages with Omashu. So for Kale to be right about faking Toph here, they'd have to have done a really good job on a leak that doesn't even have the right amount of fighters and was tweaked to add Toph, which only then worked for home stage theory after they apparently had just quickly added her in. I'm not buying it. 
Kel then went on to claim this was all just leading up to a breadwinner joke. An obscure, not very well-liked Nickelodeon show. Probably they planned on revealing one of the scribbled out fighters was going to actually be breadwinners. Kel then showed up in my own Discord and was talking about how, whether it's real or fake, it sure made a big splash. How maybe the scribbled out renders are just PNG images and not actually full renders for fighters at all. How not giving a definitive answer whether or not this leak is real or fake is more entertaining than saying just whether or not it's real. And generally just being really odd and coy about the whole leak situation. Well, I'll say up front, my honest opinion is that Kale didn't fake this leak. They posted something real. But they probably did somewhat regret posting the leak publicly and have now scrambled to kind of muddy up the truth a bit. But the leak has too much stuff going for it to make me think it's actually fake. And I'll explain why I think this one is likely real, and it involves a lot of stuff that has come out in the days after the leak was first posted. So Kale saying they airbrushed Toph on here and just being really weird about the leak, I'm, I'm not buying it. I think it's legit. So next up, going chronologically, shortly after this leak hit the scene, we got a Game Informer article with some very juicy bits of information about the game. Here's a quick rundown of the important parts of that article. The game launches October 5th, 20 characters at launch, plus two characters following right afterwards. Additional DLC after that confirmed. Also modes include sports ball confirmed. Interview includes comments on the potential of VO down the line. Voice over work. So DLC being confirmed, obviously being the big news from that article. But also 20 characters at launch plus two more fighters following after that. Weird how 20 characters at launch, plus two more, I assume is like a free update, following after, fits for the Toph leak. We are getting a 20 character launch roster instead of the 22 everyone expected. And a 20 character roster fits with the Toph leak. And two more fighters following after that. Assumedly, these two extra were meant to be in the base roster, but because they aren't finished or something, will happen shortly after launch. Remember, before we were shown 22 fighter spots, so everyone assumed a 22 character roster. Likely those final two fighters are simply slightly behind schedule for the launch window. Possibly the remaining two are the two scribbled out characters, and if the Toph leak is right, my guess is Garfield and Shredder. And then after that, additional DLC at some point in the future, which is of course awesome and the best part about this article. Anyway, considering the Toph leak that Cal posted appeared before this article existed and told us 20 characters with two more happening shortly after launch and then DLC, that seems way too spot on to be coincidental for how well it fits with the Toph leak. There's more things that have come out that go strongly in favor of the Toph leak being real, but first let me touch upon a few other things this Game Informer article said. They finally give us the official launch date as October 5th, which we already knew, but still nice to hear it for sure from the devs. And we are told voice work could be added to the game somewhere down the road, which, considering how important the voices of these characters are, could really help make this game shine. They also say it will have Sports Ball. Ludosity's other platform fighter, Slap City, has Slap Ball, so this is likely that mode for Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl. They mention how some global licensing issues did come up for a small number of characters. Unsure who those characters were, and if it actually worked out in the end to include those characters, or if the global licensing issues meant they couldn't use them. But for anyone wanting characters like people from Fairly Odd Parents and other stuff like that that we've talked about might have tough negotiations being from Frederator or some other studio involved, negotiating characters in crossovers can have its hangups. This is a real thing, and it's been talked about in this article. Of course, I think with DLC now confirmed, I'd say that probably bodes well for Nickelodeon helping negotiate for any characters that might be a bit more difficult. So maybe they initially weren't going to go out of their way and take the trouble of getting a character for base game, but now with DLC confirmed and the huge amount of fan support, I could see Nickelodeon helping them get characters that might be a bit more difficult, like the Frederator characters. So Fairly Odd Parents, My Life as a Teenage Robot, I think those characters have strong chances at being DLC. All right, so this article confirmed DLC for us and set up a scenario, 20 launch fighters and two more following shortly after, and then some DLC after that, which fits for the Toph leak. Well, we keep getting new character showcase videos as well, and a couple of them also add to the likelihood that the Toph leak is real. 
we got our first zoomed out look at the Flying Dutchman stage, and it fits perfectly with the zoomed out image of the Flying Dutchman stage icon on the stage select screen from the Toff League. We also got a look at the Space Madness stage right at the start of a match, and again, it lines up perfectly with the Toff League stage select image for Space Madness. And how would they guess exactly how all those floating platforms would be at the start of a match and use that as the icon? It can't be a coincidence. Also, check out the realistic arm that drops SpongeBob into the stage at the start of a match, just like from his theme song. The attention to detail in this game is fantastic. The more I look at it, the more I love it. We also just got a new image of Reptar on the Wild Thornberry stage, a stage we've barely seen anything of, and it still fits the Toff Lake Wild Thornberry stage image we've seen. And now, last night, we have gotten this game screen image, which also has Toph on it. Once again, fitting with what Khaled posted for the Toph leak. And Rep even dismissed this game screen image as basically old news, implying not only is the game screen real, but the Toph leak had already leaked Toph. So Toph being in the game is simply old news at this point. Frankly, I think both the Garfield leak and the Toph leak that Kel posted are legit. So we probably know our base roster and have a good guess at who those two remaining characters that will be added shortly after release will be. Again, there's DLC beyond those two extra characters, but those two extra characters seem like they were probably meant for base game and will likely be like a free update again shortly after launch. They're probably just not done with them. My guess for those two characters, Shredder and Garfield. So here's my guess for the roster we're setting up for before we get any actual DLC. And Korra Toph for base game, probably all revealed together in some Avatar reveal before October 5th. And then Shredder and Garfield as the two fighters added shortly after launch. Of course, with DLC now confirmed, this doesn't close the door on any other characters. In fact, DLC being confirmed likely opens the door wider than we've had it for who could actually show up, as getting DLC at all likely means Nickelodeon has taken notice of this game's popularity and is ready to support the game with a bigger budget for DLC content. That's my guess anyway. So I think a lot more out there characters or characters that seem tough to get into base game could happen as DLC now. So I've updated my DLC rosters slightly. For one thing, I've updated the Timmy image to this one by Hydro Plumber over on Twitter. Awesome job, it looks like a real render from the game. As for actual character changes though on my DLC prediction roster, basically I had to remove Angry Beavers and give the spot to Rocco if he isn't already in the game or any character from Rocco's Modern Life at all I'd be happy with. Heifer or whoever would be totally fine too. Otherwise, it's pretty much the same guess at DLC I had before. Jenny, Timmy, and Jimmy to give us some sorely needed mid-era Nickelodeon representation. Just check out this poll to see how much people really want that era of Nick to get some reps. The top three are Jenny, Timmy, and Jimmy. And then using the other half of the DLC to beef up the already popular series with more fighters. Because I think realistically, in a DLC scenario, and the roster gets to a large size like this, you have to give those popular series more reps. It's just realistically what's going to happen. So Squidward, I feel he's the third most important Spongebob character, but they went with Sandy instead. I still think Squidward would be next in a DLC scenario. Zuko, as he's a very popular Avatar character, and if he got in, we'd have someone from all four of the nations. Raph and Don, because it feels weird not to have every turtle playable. And Raph's my boy. Plus, if Shredder really is the mystery character, TMNT already has the most roster spots, so for them to end with the most roster spots as well makes sense, and getting the last two turtles just also makes sense to me. As I said last time I went over my DLC roster predictions, I'd love to add more series here, like the Angry Beavers, which I had to cut from my last DLC roster prediction, or something like Doug, which seems very unlikely because Disney owns Doug. But there's other series, Kablam, Rocket Power, and many more. I'd love to have more of those Nicktoon series that I love in this roster. But realistically speaking, something close to this seems like a strong roster to shoot for. We can't get every single Nicktoon in this game. Maybe those other Nicktoons can get a chance in a sequel or something. Or if there's tons and tons of DLC, then yeah, I'd love to see them on here. But I think this would be a very strong foundation to start a Nickelodeon fighting game series off on. There's a lot of Nicktoon series on here. It's a large spread of different eras of Nickelodeon 
Nickelodeon, and the big series have a good amount of their best characters on here. So I hope we end with something close to this by the end after DLC. Speaking of Nickelodeon games in general, SpongeBob SquarePants The Cosmic Shake got announced by THQ Nordic and looks like a very cool SpongeBob game. I'm excited for this one. It's a good time to be a Nickelodeon fan and a gamer right now. There's a lot of cool Nick games coming out. I know some people are curious when I'll do another Smash Bros speculation video or even a general Nintendo speculation video, and I do have some things I want to say about all that, but I've been waiting for a potential September Direct to get announced, but I don't know if that's ever going to happen at this point. So I'll probably just go ahead and just make that video without a Direct announcement now. We might have to wait until after Metroid Dread's release before we get a Nintendo Direct, if one's even on the horizon at all. Who knows for sure. Anyway, if you guys have any thoughts or comments about any any of the stuff I talked about in this video, leave them below. Remember to like the video, leave a comment in the section below, and subscribe to Papa Gino's a Twitter, a Patreon, a Discord.